This is ENP Reports, a vodcast from Editor and Publisher Magazine, the authoritative voice of news media since 1884, serving newspapers, broadcast, digital, and all forms of news publishing. Greetings once again, Mike Blinder, publisher of ENP Magazine. As always, we start off the program boring the heck out of you by asking those that are listening on a podcast platform to please, please follow us. Those watching on the YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button below, smash the bell, ring it to the right. You'll get an update each and every time we upload this weekly vodcast series dedicated to the news publishing industry. We call ENP Reports. I have a new friend, Howard Hamanoff. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. Happy to be here. Met you at the uh, Media Financial Management Association conference. I understand I bored the heck out of you. You were in my audience. <laughs> for my and amazingly enough, we're still talking. So, it's unbelievable. Uh, I mean, everybody yeah. was asleep when I did yeah. my session there. But I must have done something right because um, uh, the executive director, Joe, has, has uh, asked me to come back and do a general session at the next one. So maybe something i said made there you sense. go hey look you inspired me uh and i know that's why we're talking today about uh kind of focusing in particular around local journalism local news and and kind of what that world looks like today howard's got quite a pedigree i mean I, first of all howard we have a tradition now every other article we publish at enp centers on ai you're allowed to say duh so <laughs> rather than me reading a litany of information what i always do now with famous people like you is i go to chat gpt and i ask uh, okay all I right ask AI. i ask this 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 woman man thing it he him she her whatever okay um, i ask it what the heck are you who are you and, and here's what we got. You ready? Tell me if they did okay. well. Okay. All right. I'm bracing myself. Okay. Here we go. Howard Hamanoff is a media and entertainment industry expert with a focus on digital media broadcasting and content distribution. He's held various roles throughout his career, career including executive positions in major media companies and as a consultant. He is the senior vice president at Media League, a strategic advisor and business development firm serving companies at the convergence of media, marketing, marketing technology, and entertainment. You're you're also a writer for Forbes, a columnist weekly that I want to talk about. You have a background in law and policy, having worked as an attorney earlier in your career. You have taught courses related to media and entertainment at Columbia University and elsewhere. Your expertise spans across various aspects of the media landscape, making you, here it is, a respected voice in the industry, A, B, C, D, or F. Well, uh, almost all right, except uh, the media link part of it is about uh, almost six years out of date. So, right. uh, so I am now my day job uh, is I'm senior advisor for the media and entertainment industry at Grant Thornton. So, still in the consulting world, but a different home. And the other stuff remains. So, I continue to teach uh, and uh, and continue to write. And you, you've actually worked in the weeds. I mean, at media companies too. You were, yeah, correct me if I'm yeah, wrong, absolutely. general counsel at NBC, right? During some NBC, years. NBC cable network. So yeah, so it was the, was um, uh, during the really kind of uh, the boomiest boom time of cable, uh, and and then the and then the advent uh, of kind of internet 1.0, and us having to figure out, hey, what do we do with this? how do we take this TV business um, model and content and make, try to make it work in digital media? So it was, uh, it was a really interesting time. And here we go. That's a pretty much what we're going to chat about. <laughs> so everybody hang in there as uh, we talk about media with Howard on the backside of this message. This episode of e Reports is exclusively sponsored by Blocks Digital, formerly Town News. Even though the name has changed, their commitment to the media industry is as strong as ever. Blocks Digital is now even better positioned to deliver integrated solutions like content management, audience development, advertising revenue, video management, and more. Join the over 2,000 news publishers worldwide that power their ongoing digital transformation with Blocks Digital. Serving over 141 million monthly users who view over 6.5 billion pages of content each year. 
You can trust Blocks Digital to empower you, to connect you at scale with the community you need to reach. Blocks Digital, formerly Town News, now reimagined to help meet the news publishing challenges of tomorrow and beyond. Learn more at BlocksDigital.com. All right, Howard, I want to focus, if I may, on your latest column for Forbes. Uh, first of all, I am honored you quoted me in it. <laughs> My Google alerts lit up one day. They're, so, great. There we go. I'm in Forbes again. They work. Yeah. And, yeah. But uh, it, it was entitled Local Journalism Battles for Its Life. You reached out to me and said that you saw me speak at the MFM. And let me let me tee it up this way. When I got to the MFM, never attended one. This is the Media Financial Management Association, quite a healthy association. As many of the media conferences I attend now, attendance is down. There was over yeah, 500 yeah. at this event. Yeah, yeah. Very active, but mostly broadcast and network and entertainment industry driven in a way. I, I would say, and maybe I was wrong, but of the glad handing I did, newspaper or news publishing maybe was 20%. I'm making this up as I go, just for yeah, the no, nowadays. Yeah, yeah. In the, in the hallways. Uh, yeah, and, yeah, and, probably not. You're probably not 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 far off on that, yeah. I mean, yeah. mostly I'm shaking a hand of someone who works at an NBC network or someone who works, you know, for one of the big movie houses or something. It was, it's a large organization. And the panel before me, this was a breakout session, was was on uh, like a legislation, and it was it was Charlene um, from the uh, NAB National Association of Broadcaster, David Oxenford, who we're interviewing in our magazine this month uh, at Wilkinson Barker, talking about you know the advocacy, what's going on, and I am listening to fifteen minutes, and I'm not being disparaging. I'm just listening yeah, to how yeah. we're we're saving AM radio and car. And I'm sitting in the audience saying, I'm about to get up on this stage and beat the heck out of these people. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm going to talk about the state of media in a much more holistic approach. And yeah. you believe it's important that this is going to be something. I mean, it was all about everywhere I turned and maybe I'm wrong. What I read was about spectrum or or, or delivery. Does this make sense? And well, I got up when it's, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. I think that it, it I mean, it's interesting. And I, I um, a number of years ago. Uh, I ran uh, I ran a project for about three years focused on trying to develop a new model for paying talent in television commercials and ultimately television and and internet commercials as well. And you know my clients were SAG after the union, the uh, the uh, Association of National Advertisers, the four A's, the organization of uh, of agencies. And what I discovered in part in that process was, how much of a backwater, now that was just about advertising, but in a weird sense, it's sort of so much about the business where people, the resources focused on the, the, the buying and selling of advertising, let's say, and sort of the, that technical aspect was the, the spending and attention was so much more than on the creative. And um, I think that, that we kind of lose sight sometimes of in the, you know, of, of the content. content. I mean, it's sort of why we're doing this, you know, at least I certainly can say that for me and I suspect for you. And, uh, you know, it's, I, I used to have a, my boss at CNBC, grizzled old, you know, broadcaster uh, um, uh, who would say if he heard somebody sort of, you know, complaining about what was going on or in the office or this or that, or he'd say, he'd, he'd grumble and he'd say, well, this ain't the insurance business. And that was his way of saying, hey, we're lucky we get to be in a business where what we're doing is creating content that people really care about. They care about making, they care about reading, they care about, you know, um, sharing, et cetera. And that's, you know, the, the, the question. And I look, I write a lot about the business models of, of how to make this stuff work and how to sustain it, et cetera. But the point of it is so that we... Um, can sustain people who want to create, being able to create, um, and uh, and readers, all of us, being able to have access to the information that okay. is fundamental to society. So I felt like when I was attending this conference that I was the guy who had already gone through 
massive disruption. Remember, I came from radio and TV, entered obliquely the newspaper industry. I started as a disc jockey. I mean, I loved radio and TV, managed stations, but I got in as a nerd starting one of the first digital newspapers. Next thing you know, I'm the digital media, you know, whatever. Here's the thing. I felt that this was an in, like the broadcast and the networks and all that. You don't see what's next. And then, and that was my, my talk was about, about right, content, right. content, content. You, gotta, you don't know, you better own an audience now or you're dead. Yeah. And then I got verified just a couple of weeks later by Gordon Burrell. He was on this program. I'm sure you know Gordon and, and all his research on advertising and all that, saying that we're now in a final phase of media. If you don't have content, you're about to go under. And he was talking about networks and talking about local broadcast. Am I wrong? Or do you see in a future some massive transitions about to happen in local <laughs> the local spectrum owners. Like I look at presses as just something way back in the past, a legacy brand. And I look at a transmitter the same way, right? It's not the future and it's not something that's that important today. Am I making sense? Where's your head on all this? Yeah, well, I, I think that the, that, that you know, you, you can't define yourself as, it, it, you know, if people in music define themselves as, producers of CDs um, that worked for, you know, very well for a while. Um, and it's not what that business is. Um, you know, if you're in the news business, your business, I think, and it has been for a long time, is about, uh, you know, the, the mechanics of it are understanding your audience, understanding your market, uh, creating great content, uh, and and distributing it and monetizing it, so that's sort of the right the the ecosystem. Um, I think that th that people are still we are in very much of a test and learn mode throughout the business, and I would say I would say that among from publishers, the biggest media companies, you know, if Disney hasn't figured it all out. No. No, nobody has really figured it all out. And people have tried a variety of strategies um, th ranging from first, you know, I mean, I refer to it in my article, one of the most disastrous business decisions of the 20th or 21st centuries, which is we're going to take our content that we spend so much money and and prize so, so much, and we're going to put all of it for free on the internet and then people <laughs> will will consume it on the internet and, and we'll watch sell advertising our, around and it, watch yeah. ads you know plenty yeah we'll make a ton on advertising and all the people who subscribe to it at home will continue to do that wow what a what a great idea it's ludicrous kind of in retrospect right i mean you make it you know you make it free free always beats paid it, you know um in terms of when it's the same content. So, right. um, so we tried that, that didn't work, you know, in the, in the, in the television business or in the motion picture business, people are, um, have tried big mergers. Maybe that's the answer. We just get more of the, you know, similar entities together, but if the fundamental business is broken, then just having two big companies with a broken model isn't necessarily better than one. So, you know, we, people are in this, test and learn mode and um i think people have to be flexible and people and and i think to and your yeah. point you started nimble and remember at the end of the day i mean what's what's good i think and and local you know local journalism isn't um you know uh is, it isn't uh you know silly tiktok videos but it is that broadly speaking people really like, want to, and are consuming content like crazy. They want it. People want to get access to it. They want to access it in different ways. They want not, not want to put up with the delivery mechanisms of the past and limiting when they can watch something or where they can watch it or whatever it may be. But the product or products are hugely remain very, you know, hugely popular. Um, but the business model is, is just, you know, kind of torn asunder and people have got to figure out how to sustain a different world, not, oh, how do we go and, you know, keep, whether it's AM radio or, you know, uh, the, the, the physical newspaper or whatever the, or you know, a, cable, a cable business system. or, or yeah. a cable network, um, right. you know, and, and those look, some of those businesses still 
cable networks still today throw off a lot of money. They're not growing, um, but it's not if you're a public it's, it's not it's not sustainable and it's not it's certainly not not at all about growth so if I mean, well this is what gordon yeah. this is what gordon was referring to he calls it now the final phase of media the growth is not going to be geometric anymore those with the con he said okay, so here's the pull quote and you might like this um uh, distribution may still be king may be king kong but content is still king so we yeah, are at a yeah, point now yeah, yeah. So let's so let's I, i'm not going to you know, go over the entire article. Those that, you know, trip over this this <laughs> podcast, the audio downloads, feel free to go to editorandpublisher.com slash vodcast. We're going to have a link to Howard's article. But I want to now see when Howard reached out to me first, he said, who should I speak to if I want to get into local journal? So I gave you a lot of different people. I gave you like Ken Doctor, who just <laughs> won a, a Pulitzer yeah. uh, in, a, in a complete disruptive, you know, digital only yeah. environment. Yeah. I gave you Jeremy Goulbin, who is buying all those little tiny Gannett papers up, has almost 100 of them now in very little markets, who's doing things through scale. I gave you Waldman, right? Everybody in our industry knows Stephen Waldman, who is doing everything he can to, to give us you know, legislation that will help us have another leg on that stool. So let's go to 30,000 feet. What the heck do you think of this industry after doing all those interviews and writing up this article? Where, where's your head on it? I think what's kind of remarkable in a sense is after all, you know, years and years of, of sort of the, you know, almost relentless pounding on the, uh, uh, the, the news business and the local news business, there is still a remarkable um, level of energy commitment activity around uh uh, journalism and local journalism. The challenge is um, is finding, and it's not one. I don't think this is the matter of finding the one magic bullet that is. You know, I grew up in a business where, like you, there were certain templates for how you how you did business. And if it was cable, you create a cable network, you get it distributed by Comcast, uh, you know, Time Warner Cable and Direct TV. Uh, you throw it up. People come to it, you run advertising, you get subscriber fees. And that was amazing for 30 years. Not so much anymore. Um, in, in, and in newspapers, right, it was a combination of circulation and, uh, and ad revenues. Uh, the back, to, remember, we can remember when the back of the New York Times, uh, the back of the front section was a hugely expensive and valuable piece of advertising real estate. That has content now because it's not no, nobody's interested in paying that much to advertise there. So I think that what you've got is an, again, an industry where there's a lot of, um, and, and, and young people, um, you know, you see the activism on college campuses. And, and so there certainly is, a, you, you can't argue that people, um, and I don't want to go into the current issues, but, um, but certainly the level of activity, interest, engagement around uh, a lot of um, civic issues is certainly there. Uh, but it's an industry where the, since there is no one business model that everybody can plug and play, uh, there's a need for kind of an aggressive testing of what will work in different markets. Not every market's the same. The, the sure. Ken, you know, the Ken Doctor Santa Cruz marketplace uh, Santa Cruz, California, uh, can targets uh, and is looking to expand, you know, into other markets of 250 to 1,000 to a million people. That's much larger than the markets that uh, Jeremy Goldman and, you know, uh, his team are focused on and, you know, for their local week, mostly weekly um, newspapers and, and news sites. Um, but, uh, and, and so they're, they have to find, you know, the, the, the level will be different in different places and the, the where you dial the meters between the customers or subscribers paying and advertisers and merch and events and you know uh you know community activities um it is um and philanthropy you know which is also a part of the equation here which is um whether it's government grants or or um, you know, or private donations that also have a role to play in the overall picture here. But it's but there's no one. Hey, this is it. We just have to go do this. All right. I'm gonna. I, 
I got one final question I want to I want to poke you with. Um, you are definitely a money guy. There's no question. Deep down inside, you know, I know the legal scholar, and I would say so <laughs> in our industry, <laughs> writer, teacher, but it's you you attended a MFM, the financial side of the industry. Right, right. Walt, Warren Buffett had a famous quote. Um, that I love. I, when people are fearful, be greedy. When people are greedy, be fear fearful. <laughs> this, you know, you talked to Jeremy Goulbin, and who, and I'm, I don't know if he told you, but I had him on my show recently. Just get an update on what's happening at that meeting. I mean, perfect time to buy. He says. I mean, a lot of people are buying in now. Talk to Ken Doctor, who didn't buy anything. He started it right. Found some cash, got a contribution, you know, some philanthropy to kick it off, and now want a Pulitzer. You see where I'm going. Yep. What advice now would you give someone who's listening to this is saying, you know, local journalism, I, I'm, I'm teeing it up with a lot of pontification. Yep. We could, yeah. let me go. local journalism is mandated in the constitution, only industry that is mandated. I mean, that it has to exist. Right. Right. I mean, we got to have that final check on power. There are a lot of people looking at it now. Legislation is going to come down in the future, hopefully to help, you know, sustain it. People crave it. You just said it. I mean, they want the content, damn it, right? Like they want it. They're begging for it. We just have to figure out how to give it to them. Yeah, yeah. What advice would you give someone who says, damn, do I want to get into this quagmire? I mean, do I want to buy something or start something? What advice would you give them? I'd say, uh, first of all, um, sort of be prepared to live in a world for a while of uncertainty. And, and there is no... Um, some people will be able to still go to relatively bigger institutions and, uh, you know, the New York, I think the New York Times and uh, the Wall Street Journal and uh, the Washington Post, uh, you know, a few of the big institutions, you know, will, will continue to will continue to evolve, but will continue. But I think for most people, um, I, I think for start from the, the knowledge, understanding of the importance of the kind of that mission oriented piece of this. And if you believe in that, um, and there are a number of people, again, sort of doing interesting things with different sources and combinations. And I, I you know, I say this in the media business, the entertainment businesses as well. And I teach, as you mentioned, media deal making, which sometimes is big M&A and sometimes it's little partnerships that that help create uh, different means of gathering information or or creating it or or financing it. And so um, be a be an entrepreneur and an entrepreneur doesn't mean you have to start your own company and build, you know, bootstrap it and go out and raise the money and, you know, and and work with investors, etc. But what it means is um, is being open to uh, a variety of different strategic relationships that will put you in a position uh, to succeed. And some of that will, will be, they, they may not be full-time jobs, they may be a set of relationships, but, um, but I think the key is, um, is, is finding a series of, of like-minded and uh, souls and institutions uh, where that are trying and are looking for people on that other side to help partner. Howard Hominoff. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I know how busy you are. I'm sure there's like 19 big deals on your desk right now you got to get back to. But we, we could not be more... <laughs> more grateful for your valuable time and i'm sure our audience got a lot howard is senior national advisor for media and entertainment industry for grant thornton uh, he's a weekly contributor for forbes professor of media management and leadership and media deal making at the new school and senior fellow columbia institute on Teleinformation at columbia business school howard we appreciate your time please come back and join us again happy to thanks so much